Hi there. In our last video, we have discussed the different types of ventilation systems as well as the, um, the calculation of ventilation rates. And we have learned that we need to ventilate the animal housing because we want to control the temperature inside or the moisture inside. Actually, it's not the moisture inside that's um, that's the main issue. I mean, it's actually the effect of the of having a high moisture inside your your animal building because uh, having a high moisture um, will will promote, like for example, production of ammonia gases, which would be harmful for our livestock. As well as if you have a high moisture, then you will have, um, uh, you, I mean, it will promote the growth of molds and as well as the deterioration of your structural components. So we need to ventilate the, um, the inter environment so that uh, we can control the temperature and then uh, control the moisture. So if you recall that we have calculated um, the ventilation rates and at any ambient temperature and then th this will be our ventilation rates uh, let's say let's Q and then this one is the ambient temperature so we have a curve for maximum and then we have a curve for the minimum okay so the minimum is the moisture control and then this was the temperature control so, um, the goal is, I mean, the principle behind this ventilation process is that we need to introduce the um, fresh air inside, okay, and, okay, so let's write it down, fresh air. So we have to introduce it inside, and we should have a proper air distribution. Distribution. So it's not enough to just um, introduce this fresh air. Like for example, you have an opening here, and then you have an outlet opening, let's say just near near each other. So in that case, that would just be, um, uh, let's say that would just go out like this. I mean, if your inlet design is not proper, then that would just be. Um, that wouldn't accomplish the the basic principle of ventilation so it has to go inside and have some proper air distribution then after that we have to take the steel air okay so um, in order to do this then we need um, we need components as well uh, ventilation components so such as for example the ear inlets so it's just an openings but openings with some type of um, louvers or covers or something like that um, but it is a properly designed ear inlets okay and then we will have a week of this just um, just this topic about ear inlets and air tightness because sometimes um, air enters not just in the in the inlets but also in the in the cracks or in the leakages along the curtain sides. So we have to consider that in or when 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 selecting a fan size for the system. So we have air inlets. That's one type, and we also have um, it could be. For example, instead of air inlets, we'll have um, evaporative cooling pads. So let's just draw it here. Okay, so evaporative cooling pads is a system we're in. Uh, it's actually, if you look at the psychrometric chart, then it's a process, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like this. Okay, so because you are increasing the humidity, but while well, you, uh, you are decreasing the, the dry bulb, dry bulb temperature so we will have also a week of that I mean 
one week of this uh, topic. So there's a lot of systems involved, not just these pads, but also there are pumps in uh, pumps involved. Okay, and then there are sumps and other things. So we will discuss that in another week. Okay, what else? So so far we have just talked about these two uh, two inlets or two types of where the air can enter. So another one is actually uh, the fan. Okay, so fans. Although here in our illustration, I have illustrated the fan as uh, located in the outlet. Um, outlet location but it could be on the inlet location as well I mean it depends upon uh, what your system is is it a positive pressure or a negative pressure or a neutral pressure so here I'm just drawing a negative type pressure so this this fan is actually just uh, sucking this I mean sucking the air um, and then um, pushing it outward Okay, so we have a negative system here. So fans is another component. I mean fans, they're they're another component of the ventilation systems. So although this is very intuitive or direct to think about that the fan systems are um, we can say it's the heart of this ventilation process. But later on we'll also we'll also learn that the air inlets has to have a proper size so that this fan can function uh, can function well so it's not just the fans that's important but as well as the inlets or the evaporative cooling pads okay so for this week or for this lecture we'll be dealing with um, ventilation fans okay so fans Okay, fans are devices to move air. Okay, by by increasing them or by by virtue of let's say of temperature uh, no not te temperature but pressure okay by virtue of pressure difference okay so when I say move air okay by the way uh, we can we can also write uh, by increasing or by increasing the pressure Okay, so it means that when you say move air, then that's going to be our flow rate, right? So that's going to be our volumetric flow rate. Okay, so, um, so, so because of uh, the movement of the air, then it's, it's actually experiencing um, a pressure as well. So when you say pressure, something like uh, resistance, resistance to flow, or uh, we can also think of it as something as uh, the required, uh, I mean, the required force or something to make it flow. So later on, we'll, we will actually learn that there's going to be, uh, I mean, we are going to deal with uh, the static pressure of the fan itself and then the uh, pressure resistance of the of the uh, system or let's say the building okay resistance or we can say uh, okay the resistance of the system or the, um, the pressure or I'll just say or let's say the capacity, capacity, a fan to move the air. Okay, so this is just a very basic definition, and it may not be precise, 
but as we go along we'll be able to um, to to learn the details of these fan systems okay so let's discuss now the types of fans okay types of Okay, so in our lecture handouts, we have three types, which is uh, first is the actual actual fan. Then the second one is the centrifugal fan, centrifugal. And then another one is um, the cross flow. Okay, cross flow. Okay, cross flow fan. Okay, so for the actual fan, it's actually, uh, it looks like this. So if we draw it in three dimension or isometric view, then uh, it looks like this. And if we draw it in the side view, then it will look like this. So this is your... Okay, so this is your center line for example and then this will be your fan uh, let's say fan blades so for an actual fan it's actually uh, one of the end would be the, the inlet of the air and then the other end is the outlet okay so air enters here and then air uh, air exits on the other sides okay so this fan blade is actually rotating so it has some speed okay so later on we'll we will discuss in details the speed the diameter and then uh, the power static pressure and flow rates okay but for now this is it so the airflow is actually parallel to this longitudinal section so it's a parallel flow for centrifugal fans it's quite different okay so you have your let's say your volute shape so air enters on okay so air enters here and then exits uh, on this end okay so if we draw it in 3d uh, no in in two dimension then it's gonna be like this so air enters at this uh, inlet and then exits at this outlet okay so you notice that it's actually perpendicular so the flow is perpendicular whereas for actual fans that's uh, the flow is parallel the inlet and the outlet I mean the inlet and the outlet flow uh, they are they are parallel okay so if you try to make an axis here so for example this is our x this is our y and z so air enters along the x axis and then exits at the z axis so here the same thing if we try if we try to draw uh, the uss as well let's say this is our x or y and z so air flows along the z axis here this uh, rear end and then exit at this front end Okay, so here it's a different. Okay, so for our cross flow, uh, it's like this. So we have this longitudinal section. Then, okay, so air enters here on this, uh, let's say, on this top side, and then exits here. So if we draw our, um, our UCS, so X, Y, and Z, so in this case, our, our air, um, entry point for air is along the Y axis, and then the exit point, or the exit 
axis is along this z axis okay so although it's um, it's perpendicular perpendicular um, the same like this except that you would know that uh, this this air inlet is actually along the longitudinal um, longitudinal side okay so that's um, the direction of airflow okay so the most common ones we, we uh, will be able to encounter in in our field the agricultural engineering field um, the fans will be uh, actual fans or centrifugal fans okay so actual fans are characterized for if you can write it um, or maybe maybe we can write it this way um, actual fans are fans that have um, high high flow rate high flow rate but low pressure okay so this is okay pressure this is flow rate okay so high q but low pressure whereas for centrifugal fans uh, they are known to be high pressure uh, high pressure but low flow rates okay so for example you, you um I mean, if you recall that our definition for pressure, if we define it in terms of resistance or fan capability, then it means that if you need a, I mean, if your system needs a high flow rate uh, type of um, fans, then uh, you would go for this, uh, for this type actual fans. But if you need a high pressure fans uh, and minimum flow rates, then uh, you would go for centrifugal fans. Of course, there are still other subtypes of these actual fans, but this is the general characteristics. Also, before I forget, um, before we move on to our next topic, centrifugal fans are known to have their volute shapes. So the shape is a volute. So it's not a uh, it's not a perfect circle, but rather it's something like a spiral. Okay. Okay. So in agricultural engineering, when we deal with um, with agricultural buildings, then usually what we'll encounter or what we'll see is this type of fan, actual fans, uh, actually the propeller type fans. Whereas for grain drying, so for grain drying, um, if you have higher static pressure or system resistance, then you would need um, I mean, you would need greater pressure, so, uh, so you will you will encounter these type of fans. Okay, so let's now move on to the different types of actual fans. So actual fans are further classified into uh, propeller, propeller. Um, tube actual and then vein actual okay so propeller type fans they're just like this so um, I'm drawing um, in a cross-section view so this is our uh, fan blades So these propeller type of fans they're characterized of their low speed a okay, low speed but large volumes a okay, large value of Q uh, low static pressure static pressure then efficiency is approximately 50% okay so we have this fan blades over here so air enters this uh, side and then exits at this side. Now for tube actual fans, it's actually an elongated version of these propeller fans. So we have a cylindrical housing. Okay, so um, this one, although I've, I've, um, I've drawn this type of housing, but 
Um, but you can have, uh, let's say, um, a mesh, a mesh housing just to protect, just for protection purposes. But for tube actual, uh, tube actual fans, they actually designed for um, this is a a cylinder actually, a cylindrical surface. So because of this um, of this design, then there's going to be some improvement on um, on the efficiency. So. Um, as well as it can operate at higher speed, okay, higher, okay, higher pressure, higher pressure than the propeller fan, and efficiency is approximately sixty-five percent. Okay, so for our V national fans. It's also actually the same like these tube actual fans, except that um, we have these uh, guide veins. Okay, so you have these guide veins. Okay, so let's write guide veins. Okay, so that's vein. So with the um, so. Because of these additional guide veins, if you try to look at this in, I mean, if you try to draw this in three dimension, then what we get is, is something like this. So this is your, let's say, propeller. Okay, so let's say. So of course it has to have some somewhat su to be uh, I mean some supports, and then these supports will have some veins. Uh, let's say we we will draw a three three veins for example. Okay, I don't know if <laughs> if that looks good, but uh, the point here it's. Okay, so let's try to to draw this in three. I mean, in in front view. So in front view, what we get is like this. So um, this is your yeah. Let's say your hub, and then you have a veins here. Okay, so that is the vein. Okay, so because of these actual veins, and we have an improved efficiency. around um, 85 percent okay so how does uh, I mean how is this system actually um, I mean I mean what's the part of the systems so of course these fan blades okay, let's, let's write it on okay, fan blades uh, let's say this is your hub Okay, so th this one is to rotate, right? So if if this one is to rotate, then there must be an electric motor. So in some designs, um, you can have a direct drive. Okay, direct drive. So this is similar to the electric fan. So this is your fan blades, and then you have your electric motor uh, at this rear end. So that's uh, direct drive. But it is also possible if, uh, I mean, in some designs, they use, uh, let's say, belt drive. So for for belt drive system, if we draw it here, okay, so for example, this is your fan blades. So it must have some shaft over here. So the shaft is connected to, uh, let's say, a pulley, and then this pulley is then connected to another pulley the driven pulley where the electric motor is attached okay so let's try to draw that in three dimension okay so we're looking at this rear end so this is your electric motor for example so your electric motor has 
um, a pulley it, or it has a pulley here and then this pulley is then connected to the belt and then this belt is connected to another pulley where the shaft of, of the fan blade is connected okay so that's how it can work of course there are still another um, there's still other configurations but uh, this one um, I've I've seen this in um, in green drying equipment okay so for centrifugal fans let's move on so centrifugal fans they're actually classified in terms of their blade uh, blade design okay so basically it can be classified in terms of the radial uh, the backward curve and then the forward curve okay so if you try to look at uh, on one view the radial curve is like this Okay, so let's say this is our, our rotation. Okay, direction of rotation. So our housing okay, would be like this. Okay, so the radial is simply because when you say radial, it's um, it's actually um, from the center going uh, radially outward to um, to this let's say circumference thing so from this point going outward so that's radial so we have straight blades here for backward curve okay so for a backward curve then if our direction is like this a clockwise rotation then um, that's gonna be like this so it's a curve Okay, so this is the the motion. Okay, so it's actually the back uh, the back surface of this blade that's uh, that's heating this uh, that heat that heats the air. Okay, so for so for forward curve, we will have of course just the opposite of this one. So instead of heating the air using the backward surface. Uh, you heat the air using the the front the the front surface. Okay, so that's the forward curve. Oops, sorry. I should be using the the green colors. Okay, so there's still a lot. Uh, there's still a lot of details of this. Um, these uh, centrifugal fans but for ventilation houses or for livestock housing usually what we use is these propeller fans okay so um, I think I don't have much time now left there's uh, one minute left so we'll continue our discussion of these fan systems in the next video. See you in the next video.